Hey kids, want some education? Hello internet and welcome to Behind The- <coughs> Today we're going to be learning about the Big Bang Theory, the origin of the universe. First things first, the Big Bang was never an explosion. It was actually space and time expanding everywhere at once. That's an important thing to know, keep that in mind. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, let's actually talk about the Big Bang. The best place to start is the Planck era. Take note that most of the events in the Planck era, and the events after it, take place in less than a second. That's pretty fast. It was around the Planck era, where the universe was a small, hot, roiling morass. In that small, hot, roiling morass, gravity, electromagnetism, and some nuclear forces fused together into what we would call a super force. This many seconds later, the super force they all know and love starts to break apart and as a dramatic burst of expansion is triggered. This is how Hubel's Law works. You guys know who Hubel is, right? He said and scientifically proved that the universe is expanding? Yeah, he's that guy. After the inflation that caused the expansion of the universe, particles of matter started to appear. These particles are called quarks. There is matter and antimatter. And they would destroy each other in a burst of radiation. This would turn the quarks into energy. Here's the electroweak era. Gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces have all split up. And the universe has now expanded into a billion kilometers in diameter. And it happened in less than one second. Because of the universe's current size, temperatures have decreased. And the quark life cycle has now ended. However, there is an alternative. Quarks form into new particles such as neutrons and hadrons. Some last longer than others, some last shorter than others. And that leads us to... Wait, uh, where's the transition card? <laughs> Finally, one second has passed. And now the universe has expanded into a length of 100 billion kilometers in diameter. Now if that's not progress, then what is progress? The universe is now so cold that the neutrons decay into protons, which form the very first atom, hydrogen. The formation of hydrogen causes the universe to warm back up again to a temperature of 1 billion degrees. Oh, that's hot! But then, 199 seconds later, things start to cool back down. Enter the opaque era. Ah! 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 It was around this time period where it was so cold, the hydrogen process stops. <coughs> the universe is now negative one billion degrees. Ah, oh, that's cold. And the universe is now 75% hydrogen and 25% helium. But there's something missing. Where were the stars? Where were the galaxies? Yeah, there wasn't a lot of light in the universe. But then, hydrogen gas started to clump up and then gravity put pressure onto the clump, creating the stars and galaxies, which created the very bright universe that we see today. That seems like an accurate explanation of how the universe was created, right? But keep in mind that it's still a theory. Because one question remains. What happened before? We don't know. You ever figured out a way to fuse the quantum theory and the Big Bang together? <coughs> but there is a theory on the Big Bang Theory. What if the Big Bang Theory was never the origin of the universe? What if it's actually the Big Bounce, where the space and time continuum 
was so contorted that gravity reversed on itself, causing the universe to start over. But that's just a theory. A I just game theory.